Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, this is such a special moment in time. The India-Israel Business Summit. For their gracious presence, please join together to applaud His Excellency, Mr. Benjamin Netanyahu, Prime Minister of Israel and Prime Minister of India, Mr. Narendra Modi. We're also extremely delighted to have Mrs. Sara Netanyahu, the wife of His Excellency, Mr. Benjamin Netanyahu. A very warm welcome to you. Ladies and gentlemen, in July 2017, during Prime Minister Narendra Modi's visit to Israel, a bilateral MOU was signed between the Department of Science and Technology and the Israel Innovation Authority for the establishment of the India-Israel Industrial R&D and Technology Innovation Fund, I4F. With a joint contribution of 40 million US dollars, the I4F fund is aimed at promoting, facilitating, and supporting research and development between India and Israel which would lead to the co-development and commercialization of innovative technologies for agriculture, energy, healthcare, in the digital space, and also water challenges. May I now invite both the Prime Ministers to launch the maiden call for the joint projects under the I4F program. A historic moment. The I4F website, there it is on the screen. A special brochure has also been published to commemorate the launch of the I4F fund. We'd like to present copies to Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and Prime Minister Narendra Modi with a request to both of them to unveil their copies and release the brochure. <laughs> Honorable Prime Ministers, thank you very much for sharing those first glimpses of the brochure with everyone. And now, ladies and gentlemen, words of welcome and opening remarks by Mr. Rashesh Shah, President Fiki, and Chairman and CEO of the Edelweiss Group. Honorable Prime Minister of India, Sri Narendra Modi, His Excellency Mr. Benjamin Netanyahu, Prime Minister of Israel, business leaders, government officials from India and Israel, ladies and gentlemen, Shalom and Namaste to all of you. On behalf of the Indian industry and the Federation of Indian Chambers of Commerce and Industry, FIKI, I welcome our most esteemed dignitaries at the India-Israel Business Summit. And this makes a defining moment for all of us present here. So it's a matter of great pride that we are witnessing what we call an era of rapidly transforming economic strategic relationship between our two great countries. The presence of who's who from Israel and Indian industry at the summit today underlines the importance that is being extended by both sides to collectively unveil this next wave of economic cooperation between our countries. I would especially like to commend the two great leaders, Prime Minister Modi and Prime Minister Netanyahu, whose stature has allowed this high-powered conversations and the subsequent signing of the number of partnership agreements between the two sides all through the day today. We are very certain that the MOUs will go a long way in 
defining the future of cooperation in many areas. The co-production treaty that we have embarked on is bound to extend impetus to promote the soft power of tourism, and that would translate in increased people-to-people -people connect in the years ahead. India and Israel are natural political and economic allies, and this alliance being forged today will go a long way. The innovation bridge announced between the two countries is a foundation to innovate, to incubate, indigenize for India, and to, in and to internationalize for global markets. It is indeed very noteworthy that the India-Israel CEO Forum, whose agenda has been articulated by Government of India, DIPP, FIKI from India, and the Manufacturers Association of Israel, has reiterated and firmly placed its focus and intent on creating an action plan to deepen the Indo-Israel cooperation. This covers agriculture, irrigation, water management, urban infrastructure, transport, pharmaceutical, healthcare, ITES, startups, and innovation ecosystem, and aerospace, defense, and homeland securities. So many areas where so many opportunities to collaborate and cooperate. Sir, I would conclude by quoting Mr. Theodore Herzl, a much revered thinker and widely considered to be the father of the modern day Israel. He said, if you will it, it is not a dream. So along with these words, I once again thank you, all of you, for being here and would like to wish the Israeli delegation a very warm and pleasant stay in India. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Shah, for your opening remarks. I'd now like to invite Ms. Shobana Kamenini, President CII, and Executive Vice Chairperson, Apollo Hospitals Enterprise Limited, to share her perspective with us. Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi ji, Honorable Prime, Prime Minister of Israel, Sri Netanyahu ji, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Honorable Prime Ministers, whenever we think of Israel, the first two things that immediately strikes, almost by default, is technology and innovation. While Israel is a small market, it has a strong high-tech economy, highly innovative industry, free trade agreements with the US, EU, and Mercosur, making it attractive for investment and joint collaboration. India, on the other hand, is a huge market with a robust agricultural sector, growing infrastructure, and many initiatives like Digital India, Make in India, Smart Cities, Skill India, Renewable Energy, which offer lots of opportunities for Israeli companies to participate and contribute. This presents a unique opportunity for collaboration. The two countries have already taken a number of initiatives to strengthen our bilateral cooperation. These include establishing a strategic partnership in water and agriculture, as Rashi Shah has mentioned, boosting bilateral cooperation in innovation, entrepreneurship, and startups, supporting joint research and development projects in cutting edge areas, including big data in healthcare, joint development of defense projects, including the transfer of technology from Israel with a special emphasis on make in India. While these are welcome measures, let me highlight a few more areas which uh, India and uh, Israel can and possibly are working together. First, space and satellite cooperation. In the areas such as at atomic clocks, academic collaboration, and electric propulsion for small satellites. Two, cybersecurity. In an era of artificial intelligence, 
and autonomous mobility, cybersecurity will become very critical. Both countries need to work together for capacity building in this area for mutual benefit. Third, Indian corporates and VCs should consider investing in Israeli companies to help India-specific technologies and products. A free corridor for financing innovation could be created to facilitate development of India-specific solutions. In healthcare, I'd like to tell you, over the last 15 months, we've actually uh, incubated four Israeli companies. Fourth, India's high-tech industries in telecom, IT, electronic hardware, computer products, etc., are at the forefront of international R&D. In fact, Israel's research and development expenditure as a percentage of GDP is the highest among o OECD economies. The high-tech industries are among the 25 sectors that are shortlisted in Make in India campaign. Israel can select one of them. One, uh, Israel can select one of the industrial corridors that we have for developing an Israel enclave that would specialize in high-tech manufacturing for the Indian and overseas markets. I sincerely hope that the visit of the Honorable Prime Minister of Israel to India would be fruitful and productive, and we wish him and the delegation all the very best, including your, your visit to Taj tomorrow. We're very happy that you and your wife will be visiting there. And once again, I'd like to thank our Honorable Prime Minister of India for being with us and actually championing all of India's initiatives around the world, and especially in India. Thank you very much. And now, ladies and gentlemen, our next speaker, the President of the Manufacturers Association of Israel, MAI, and Chairman of the Presidium of Business Organization. Please welcome Mr. Shraga Brosh. His Excellencies, Prime Ministers of India and Israel, Mr. Modi and Mr. Netanyahu, members of the Indian uh, Business uh, Forum, members of our business delegation, dear guests, allow me first of all to thank again to our Prime Minister for inviting us to come together with him to this very important country, to India, and continue the movement that we start six or seven months ago during the visit of Prime Minister Modi in Israel. The Israel business community knows very well the importance of India to our growth, to our economy, uh, life in Israel, and the big challenge that we all took upon ourselves to increase the business relationship between India and Israel. The whole day today, we discussed the way how to do it. And we agreed, again, that the big challenge that you put in front of us in July to reach $20 billion will achieve. Four and a half years from today, we will be there. And I must tell you that not just the Indian market is very interesting for us, or the Israeli market for you. We know that we can go together to third market and to achieve a lot of goals on those countries. And we agreed that in six months from today, in June, your business delegation, led it, I hope, by the Minister of Trade and Industry, will visit Israel, and we all together will make sure that we are on the right track to reach this goal. Thank you very much. Mr. Brosh, thank you for sharing your thoughts with us. It's such an honor to welcome one of the most charismatic, erudite, and highly accomplished leaders of the world. Your Excellency, Mr. Benjamin Netanyahu, India welcomes you warmly, and we deeply cherish your presence here today. Your shared vision of our two countries speaks of an ancient past, vibrant present, and a quest to seize a promising future. 
You also foresee a flourishing partnership to bring prosperity, peace, and progress for the people of both Israel and India. I'd now like to invite you, Your Excellency, Mr. Benjamin Netanyahu, to deliver your special address. Thank you. Prime Minister Modi, my dear friend, the dear friend of Israel and the Jewish state. Thank you for uh, your magnificent hospitality, your friendship, and for this forum of business leaders from Israel and India. I always say to uh, Prime Minister Modi when I have a chance, I say, you guys who do the work, we're the guys who are supposed not to interfere with you. <laughs> and we do our best. Uh, I want to uh, say briefly how much I admire what Prime Minister Modi is doing in India. He's doing two basic things that I want to talk about because we've been doing it and now we can do it together. The first is economic reform. The second is the promotion of technology. Economic reform is key because you cannot move if you're stuck, if you're mired in very high taxes and very high bureaucracy, uh, it's very difficult to move because people want to be able to see the fruit of their labors. Uh, and for that, you have to have a streamlined economy. I just heard from Prime Minister Modi an impressive statistic that India moved in the three short years that four years that you have been uh, stewarding uh, its effort, 42 places in the business-friendly uh, index. I have to say we have not moved as much. <laughs> but I, I personally chair a committee that deals every few weeks with uh, regulation, really with over-regulation. And we've moved the competitive index which incorporates also business-friendly indices. We've moved from number 27 to number 16 in the world in two years. It's not enough. It's not enough. Now, let me tell you why I think Prime Minister Modi is hitting the nail right on the head. Because bureaucracy is a tremendous opportunity for growth. You don't believe me. Bureaucracy is a tremendous opportunity for growth because when you, you remove it, it grows. So we both, have, we both have a treasure. We have abundant bureaucracy. And if you we keep hacking away at it, you're going to see more and more and more growth. This is the first thing that Prime Minister Modi is bringing to India and that I'm trying in my own meager resources to bring to Israel. Now the second thing, technology. There is not going to be any more uh, this distinction between high-tech and low-tech because over time, just about everything will be technologized, everything. We see it in specific areas. We see it in, uh, uh, obviously, in communications. We see it in, uh, in water, we see it in agriculture. We talked uh, in the room uh, adjacent to this briefly now about not smart cities, smart fields, precision agriculture. And what we're seeing is the arrival of something new in history that is reshaping the world, not merely reshaping our economies, but reshaping our world. And that is the, the confluence of big data, connectivity, and artificial intelligence. This is changing everything. We talk about a special project to do together to revolutionize the agriculture in India and Israel, and everywhere in the world, to use big data, artificial intelligence, and connectivity to be able to target the individual plant. I want to give you three examples where this is changing, where we created industries virtually out of nothing in a few short years. The first one is in cyber technology. We did not have, we had the basis for doing it, but in a very short time, Israel is uh, 
now become the, a country of less than 9 million people that is receiving 20%, 20% of the global investment, private investment in cybersecurity. So in the other room, that's 200 times our size in the world's population. In the other room, we spoke about an Indian-Israeli cooperation, rail and cyber. Can you imagine? Yes, you should imagine it, because everything will require cyber security. Rail and cyber, everything in cyber. First industry that is being revolutionized by big data, cyber, uh, artificial intelligence, and connectivity. Second example is cars. Cars. You have a grand car industry in India. We tried to have a car industry. When I was a young officer almost 50 years ago in the Israeli army, I received a car. It was made out of uh, fiberglass, an Israeli car. One day, I leaned on the car. My elbow went right through it. <laughs> and that was the end of our, of our attempt, because we couldn't compete. We couldn't compete in scale on the chassis, on the engines, on the tires. We tried. Failed miserably. Now, in the last five to 10 years, really in the last five years, we have a car industry. Because cars, the value of cars, the cost of cars will be 85%, very soon, 85% software, 15% hardware. A computer on wheels. Now we can compete. We have 500 startup companies that receive about three to four billion dollars uh, investment every year uh, from uh, the world community. And they are doing everything from autonomous vehicles to other systems. And we are gaining ground. You know some of our systems. If you use Waze, satellite crowd navigation, really. That's an Israeli company that uh, was sold to Google. Now we have Mobileye, an Israeli autonomous vehicle company that was sold for, to uh, Intel for uh, $15 billion. But they were given the keys for all their autonomous vehicle businesses, Intel's businesses, around the world. Second industry, car industry. Third industry, digital health. We're beginning to cooperate on that. We have a, a database for 98% of our population with all the medical records for the last 20 years. We're taking a subset of that, of uh, 100,000 people, and we're taking uh, basically saliva swabs, so we have a genetic subset for that. And now we're taking 2,000 people of those, that subset, and monitoring their physical activity. Three-layered database, general population, health, genetic composition, physical activity. We think this holds enormous promise for personalized medicine, and preventive medicine, and we want to do it with you. This, these are three industries out of nothing that have sprung up. I say that we cannot even imagine the other possibilities. Now, here's the point that I believe in. You have brilliant people in India. We just sat opposite them on the table. Maybe even more brilliant than political leaders. Who knows? It's possible. We have brilliant people in Israel. And what we can do together is shape the future. It's not something that I say offhand. I believe in India deeply. I believe in India because I know your heritage, your culture, your ingenuity, your creativity, your humanity, your passion, which is exemplified by Prime Minister Modi to change the world for the better. We are your partners. And I came here to say today, Prime Minister Modi, Thank you for believing in Israel the way we believe in India. Thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency, for sharing your incredible insights and vision going forward. Ladies and gentlemen, as I look towards the stage from my vantage point, I see a perfect picture of India for Israel and Israel for India, words used by Prime Minister Narendra Modi to express this special bond, a relationship that is now moving from strength to strength. A unique camaraderie forged by two dynamic world leaders who share a vision and belief for the prosperity and progress of both their countries. Prime Minister Narendra Modi is deeply respected and admired for his conviction,
courage and determination to better the life and well-being of every Indian. India is blessed with a Prime Minister who is forging ahead and leaving no stone unturned to foster development, integrity and honesty. A true statesman, visionary and tall world leader. Earlier today, His Excellency described the Indian Prime Minister, Mr. Narendra Modi, as a revolutionary who is changing India and catapulting it to the future. I'd like to now request the Honorable Prime Minister of India, Mr. Narendra Modi, to present his keynote address at this historic India-Israel <laughs> Business Summit. His Excellency, Benjamin Netanyahu, Prime Minister of Israel, Mr. Sara Netanyahu, business leaders of India and Israel, ladies and gentlemen, I welcome Prime Minister Netanyahu and members of the Israel delegation on behalf of all my countrymen. It is an added pleasure to be with the CEOs of both countries. Prime Minister Netanyahu and I have just completed a fruitful interaction with Indian and Israeli business leaders through the bilateral CEOs forum. I have high hopes from this interaction and partnership of CEOs we started last year. Friends, I have always had a deep regard for Israel and its people. I visited Israel in 2006 as a Chief Minister of Gujarat. Again, last year in July, I visited Israel. The first such visit from India. It was a very special visit. I experienced at close quarters the remarkable spirit of innovation, enterprise, and perseverance that drives Israel. There is new energy and purpose that has invigorated our ties over the last few years. It will help take over cooperation to greater heights. We stand on the scup of a bright new chapter in India-Israel relations driven by our people and the mutual opportunities for betterment of their lives. The role of business and industry is crucial in the transformation of our ties. It is your combined efforts that will add real value to our interaction and produce concrete success. Given the scale of the Indian economy and the relevance of cutting-edge Israeli technologies for us, even sky is not the limit for what we may achieve together. Friends, I'm delighted that today we have launched the maiden call for joint R&D projects under the India-Israel Industrial R&D and Technological Innovation Fund, I for F, which was announced during my visit to Israel last July. This fund to be utilized 
over a period of five years is a welcome opportunity to combine the talent pool of the two countries in pursuit of path-breaking technological solutions that can be commercially exploited. I strongly encourage enterprises in both countries to utilize this platform. Equally exciting is the pickup in science and technology exchanges through joint R&D projects such as in areas like data analytics and cyberspace security. I am happy to note that the India-Israel Innovation and Technology Conclave is going to be held in India in July 2018. I hope this conclave will spur core development of new technologies. In fact, the groundwork for this will be started from I create a day after tomorrow. We are both going to Gujarat to inaugurate this campus which is being developed as a leading innovation hub. Friends, I am talking Prime Minister Nityanu to rural areas of Gujarat because the real power of technology and innovation lies in the benefit it brings to the common man. Israel is universally known as a startup nation with a unique ecosystem for innovation and incubation. The credit for this goes to the Israeli entrepreneurs. You have made Israel a strong, stable and innovative economy. You have made a country of 8 million people signed as a global powerhouse of technology. Whether it is water tech or agri tech, whether it is a food production, its processing or conservation, Israel has been shining example with new breakthroughs and advances. Whether it is physical or virtual security, whether it is on land, water or space, your technology has won admiration. In fact, hailing from a water deficit state in India, I have particularly admired Israel's water efficiency. Friends, in India, we have been taking steady steps over three years at both macro as well as micro level to make a difference. Our motto is reform, perform and transform. The results are twofold. On the one hand, our procedures, processes and systems are getting aligned with the best in the world. Secondly, we are able to maintain the pace of faster growth. In spite of deep structural reforms, we are among the fastest growing major economies. FDI inflows are at all time high with 40% rise. Tremendous work is being done to skill and employ the youth. 65% of our population is below 35 years of age and is hungry for technology-enabled growth. This is our greatest opportunity as well, as well as challenge. For this purpose, we have started the Startup India campaign. There is a vast potential for India-Israel partnership in this area. The India-Israel Innovation Bridge will act as a link between the startups of the two sides. I have been saying that Indian industries, startups and the academic institutions must collaborate 
with their Israeli counterparts to access the huge reservoir of knowledge. India has size and scale. Israel has sharpness and age. There would be many ideas and technologies that can be useful for or can be commercially scaled, scaled up in India. Friends, today we have emerged as the sixth largest manufacturing nation, but we are not done yet. We are positioning India as a global manufacturing hub, leveraging the energy of our youth. The Make in India initiative is designed to help achieve this. Through these initiatives, combined with the new ecosystem of a formal economy and a unified tax regime, we are trying to create a new India. We are particularly keen to develop India into a knowledge-based, skill-supported and technology-driven society. A grand beginning has already been made through Digital India and Skill India. To enable this transformation, in the last few years, my government has undertaken substantial reforms. We have resolved a number of regulatory and policy issues facing the businesses and companies. We have worked sincerely on ease of doing businesses in India. The results are there to see. In the last three years, India has moved up 42 places in the index of ease of doing businesses of World Bank. We have moved up 21 places on the Global Innovation Index of WIPO in two years. We have also moved up to 32 places in last two years in the Global Competitiveness Index of the World Economic Forum, the highest for any country. We moved 19 places on the Logistic Performance Index of 2016 of World Bank. We are among the top 10 FDA destinations listed by UNCTAR, but we will not stop. We want to do more and do better. To enable entry of capital and technology, most of the sectors, including defense, have been opened for F FDI. More than 90% of the FDI approvals have been put on automatic route. We are now among the most open economies. Just a few days ago, we have allowed 100% automatic route FDI in single brand retail con and construction development. We also opened up our national carrier, Air India, to foreign investors. Every day, we are making it easier to do business in India. In taxation, we have carried out a number of historic reforms. The path-breaking GST reform has been introduced successfully and smoothly. It is by far the biggest business and economic reform India has ever done with introduction of GST and of financial technologies, the digital transactions, we have already moved towards a modern tax regime which is also transparent, stable and predictable. Friends, several Israeli companies have joined hands with Indian companies for making in India. Many others, especially those with advanced water technologies and agri-technologies, defense and security systems, and pharma knowledge have a foothold 
in India. Similarly, Indian companies have significant presence in several sectors in Israel like IT, irrigation, and pharma. Diamond remains a strong link in our trade. There are more business joint ventures today than before. However, this is just the beginning. Our trade with Israel has grown to more than $5 billion. But this is still well below the real potential. We must attain the full potential of our ties. This is not only a diplomatic Im imperative, but also an economic one. I welcome your suggestions on how to unlock our combined potential. The spirit of innovation, adaption, and problem solving is inherent in both countries. Just to give you an example, imagine the environmental and economic gains if we can collaborate to save wastage and if we can add value in our fruits, vegetables, and horticulture. Similar is the case with water. We have situation of plenty as well as scarcity of water. We have situation of food being thrown away even as there are many who go hungry. Friends, India's development agenda is huge. It presents a vast economic opportunity for Israeli companies. I invite more and more Israeli people, business and companies to come and work in India. Along, <laughs> along with the government and people, the business community of India too is keen to join hands. I wish your companies and ventures all success. I assure you of my support and that of my government wherever it is required. And I thank Prime Minister Netanyahu for his continued support in fast-tracking India-Israel trade and economic collaboration. I am confident many successes lie ahead for our partnership. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Prime Minister, Mr. Narendra Modi, for sharing your vision and perspective for the way ahead and for creating a further deeper synergy between both our countries and for creating a new India. We'll now conclude this evening with a vote of thanks by Mr. Sandeep Jajodia, President Asocham and Chairman of the Monet Group. Mr. Narendra Modi ji, Honorable Prime Minister of India, His Excellency Mr. Benjamin Netanyahu, Honorable Prime Minister of Israel, distinguished members of the delegation accompanying His Excellency, colleagues from CII and FICI, and representatives from the Indian industry, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. It is indeed an honor for Indian industry to have His Excellency Mr. Benjamin Netanyahu Honorable Prime Minister of Israel amidst us. We are grateful to His Excellency for gracing the Indian-Israel Business Summit. We very deeply thank our Honorable Prime Minister, Sri Narendra Modi ji, for being with us today. Sir, your presence has hugely elevated the importance of this Business Summit and reaffirms India's commitment for strengthening bilateral ties between the two countries. India has historical and very warm relations with Israel. My colleagues in the chamber and above all, both the visionary leaders have very eloquently spoken about these relations and the prospects of its future growth. Excellency, world is eyeing Israel for its technology in defense, 
pharmaceuticals, agriculture, homeland security, cybersecurity, gems, etc. Israel is considered as a country of technology with most of its manufacturing, including traditional fields, based on intensive and sophisticated research and development and high-tech processes. On the other hand, India is one of the world's fastest growing economies, attracting many global economic powers to spread their wings here, to cater to its 1.3 billion people, with 65% of the population below the age of 35. We firmly believe that the strong bilateral ties amongst India and Israel would yield positive results in terms of strengthening positions for both the countries in the global economy. Excellency, India has become the hot favorite destination for investment amongst global investors under the dynamic and visionary leadership of our Honorable Prime Minister, Sri Narendra Modi ji. Under his guidance, India's GDP is all set to achieve double-digit growth and offers a conducive environment for investment in multi-sectorial opportunities. Today's deliberations would hopefully provide valuable insight and guidance in that direction and further strengthen the spirits on both sides to find ways and means to forge stronger bonds for the mutual benefits. With this, once again, we thank His Excellency Honorable Prime Minister of Israel and our most honorable Prime Minister of India for their gracious presence. Thank you, Jai Hind. That brings this evening to a close. As both the Prime Ministers leave the hall, let's bid them adieu with a huge round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Your Excellency's distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being here with us this evening. We now invite you to join us for dinner in the Shah Jahan Hall, which is across the foyer. So have a wonderful evening, goodbye, and good night. <laughs>